everyone. My name is Will Vanderland and I'm with ITS Partners out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thanks for viewing our video today. With me is Jake Crawford who will be helping out with this little demonstration that we have. And today we're talking about uh, semantic endpoint protection, SEP, and in particular we're looking at the system lockdown. We've got a few questions on that that come from some of our customers. How does this work? How do I deploy it? So. Uh, let's start out and, and take a look at that. First, I'll tell you uh, a little bit about what it is. Um, you probably already know, otherwise you wouldn't be looking at the video, but uh, the system lockdown uh, has the ability to control applications on a group of client computers, and we can do that by either uh, blocking unapproved applications or we can whitelist approved applications. And the way we do that is we create a file fingerprint list and then reference that list within the policy. So that's kind of a high-level overview. Uh, with Jake's help here, I'll uh, step through what we need to do. So the first thing we need to do, uh, well, if we look at our, uh, our environment we have here, we have a, a SEPM, and then we also have a client that's attached, and, and we'll be um, uh, using both of these. We'll go back and forth to demonstrate uh, exactly how the lockdown works. So uh, there's a, a new thing that's come out in the latest version of 12.6, and, and we are going to want to touch on that a little bit about how to create the, uh, the, the fingerprint list. And uh, one of them where we're uh, doing demonstrating right now is to um, highlight an endpoint, uh, right-click, and then uh, choose the uh, run command on the endpoint. And then at the bottom, this is the new feature in 12.1.6. It's collect file fingerprint list. That was uh, formerly not an option to be um, run from the, the, the management console. Um, that's a pretty neat new feature. Uh, it, it, uh, it eliminates the need to have to log on to the endpoint itself to run this uh, executable that I'll show you in just a minute um, to, to create that list. So. Um, that's the new part. Let me show you the old way, just in case you're not completely updated to the latest version of SAP yet. Uh, we'll go over to the um, the agent, or I'm sorry, the client computer that we have here. And uh, what we need to do is create this list of uh, finger, fingerprints of all the applications that are loaded on the endpoint. Uh, what this uh, application will do is it'll create a list of MD5 hashes along with the file name. Uh, the executable that we're looking for is called uh, check, uh, checksum.exe. It's uh, uh, installed by default right in the uh, installation path for SEP, and this is on every client. This is part and parcel of the client install. Um, so uh, a little trick here, it's, it's pretty easy to run it right uh, from right where it is, but a little trick here is to just uh, copy this to, like, say, the root of the drive. Um, so uh, we've done this already in advance, and uh, to run this, all you need to do is uh, you should run it from um, uh, elevated privileges. So start the command prompt as an administrator, and then just type in the name of the executable, checksum.exe, and a space, and then we want the, the name of the output file, and then another space, and then which drive that we want to scan. So it'll scan through and go through every single executable, every DLL, uh, and there it goes. It launches off. Now, depending on the size of the drive, this can take some time. So through with a, uh, through the magic of video editing, we're just going to stop this, and uh, we've already created uh, uh, a number of lists here. We've done it a few times. Uh, the list that we'll be using is the result, the one there that's highlighted, result.txt. And what we'll do is we'll just um, make that available to the SEPM. And from there, we'll go back to the SEPM now, and we'll show you how to uh, use either method. If you're not using 12.1.6, that you can do it from the command console or uh, the, old, the older way of actually creating a, the a file fingerprint list. So we need to go to the Policies tab. And from there, we need to go to Policy Component. And you can see about halfway down is the file fingerprint list. And if we click on that, we see one that's already been made. And this is from uh, Jake's um, MacBook. And um, that, that is how the file is made when it's created from the management console. Okay, so 
if we wanted to if we wanted to bring in another file list, we would either uh, right click and add, or on the left side, we can also add a file fingerprint list near the bottom. Either way, we'll get you to the same wizard here, and then it's basically next, next, finish. Uh, there's some windows to be filled in. Uh, give it a, a friendly name here. And then we'll point it to the uh, uh, file that we used for create or that we created with the checksum.exe. It's pretty straightforward. We just browse, find the file, load it in, and that just takes just that's a, that's really as quick as it happens. You're seeing that in real time, and there it is. We're done. Just uh, finish. From there, uh, we go back to the. Uh, uh, the, the clients and we we find the group that we want to apply this to now remember this is a uh, this is a group level like everything in CEP is it's it's uh, deployed or uh, placed against the client at the group level so from here uh, go to the policies tab and then up above you'll see the system lockdown on the left hand side and you can see that it's off this is the, typically the default uh, view or I'm sorry the default setting and off so uh, it's it's off by default. There's two things that you can do. Um, both of them basically turn it on. But the first one there to log unapproved applications, um, it doesn't actually stop a, a, an application from running. If you were whitelisting or blacklisting, it would just simply give you a, an indication that an unapproved application had been run. And then the bottom one would be to actually enable system lockdown, uh, and from there. Uh, if an executable is, is attempted to be launched that's not part of the list in the case of whitelisting, uh, then it would not be allowed. In the case of blacklisting, of course, you're listing the explicit executables that you don't want to be allowed to run. Uh, but in this case, because we've gone and created the actual list from the applications that are on the C drive, uh, we want to choose the, the whitelisting method. So um, let's put that in, in, for right now, let's put it in log unapproved application, and then we're in whitelist mode in the, in the middle pane here, and then we'll just add the file fingerprint list and choose, these are the, um, the two files, as you recall, which were part of the policy components, and just add the one that we created. We could use either one, um, but we'll just use this one. This is kind of, if you will, the old-fashioned way. Remember, 12, Windows 12.1.6 uh, allows this to be run from the management console, so it's a little bit easier in that regard and that you don't have to actually access the, the target machine. Uh, so from there, you can add additional file names if you know individual file names. Uh, this is the box that you do it. We won't do it right now. Uh, from here, we'll just uh, um, approve that policy just by clicking OK. And we're off to the races. Now we should have, uh, uh, oh, you can see system lockdown is now turned to on. Once we put a client in that group and that policy is updated, then we'll be able to see that uh, the whitelisting is um, on and working. Jake, you want to take the controls from here? Sure. So with the magic of video editing, um, since we have updated our policy in the management server and taken our hash file, updated it into the management server in a system lockdown policy and apply that to this client, you can see that this client is now being placed in the, the locked down group. So it's currently getting the policy for system lockdown that we've specified. Um, had prevention been enabled at this point, uh, we would not be allowed to execute or download and execute any new additional executable files. Everything is basically the golden image at this point. We've ran our whitelisting hash on all the executables on the machine, and we've basically declared that everything on the system is valid. Going forward, if we were to add or install any new programs, they would fail to execute. At this point, they won't. So like I said, in, in, the, time that, in the time we have uh, brought in our hash into the management server and applied the policy in the background, we've also installed Mozilla Firefox down here. You'll see that's a new application. So Mozilla Firefox was not included on the system. It was not installed at the time that we ran our checksum utility. So when we re-enable application whitelisting or when we turn system lockdown into lockdown mode, we will not be able to execute this file any longer. This program will simply not run.
I can give you a quick demonstration of that. Go back to our system lockdown policy. And this does take a while down here. You can see the unapproved applications that come in. Um, I, there's, a, there's an interval at which the logs get sent back from this client back to the management server. So you will be able to see what would be blocked if you had enabled system lockdown before you actually enable it. And this is going to help you narrow down if there's any executables that had been installed after the fact or if you weren't immediately um, running your hash and putting it into a system lockdown mode, you wanted to let it sit for a few days just to make sure that it caught all the executable, uh, executable data on your system or perhaps you had a second drive. There's a number of different reasons why you would want to wait. And Symantec recommends that you wait at least 24 hours. And in fact, if you, if you even attempt to put this into system lockdown mode, you're going to get a warning that says it hasn't been at least one day. So you, you can go ahead and click on yes anyway, just for the sake of this demonstration. Um, again, Symantec recommends that you let it run at least one day so you can see if there's going to be any problems. And this is just to avoid anything that could have, um, anything that you might not have had permissions to, or some, you know, a second drive, anything like that. If, there, if there's any kind of conflict with the rules and what you expect to be allowed in your system, this is how you would, uh, go and identify what is not being allowed to execute, but you expect it to be allowed to execute. So this is just the refining portion of this policy. Um, and again, you're gonna get that warning. We're gonna go ahead and click yes anyway. Now at this point, system lockdown is in effect and any new applications that are not included in our, uh, our file fingerprint list here that we ran on this machine will not be allowed to execute. So we can go back and do a quick demonstration. Before, uh, before we do though, we wanna make sure that we're using the current policy. So we're just gonna do a quick update policy from the management server here. And at this point, um, everything is being enforced. So any new applications will not run. And you'll see that you get a warning, Windows cannot access this specified device. And if you specify in your policy, you can have SEP notify users that the application was blocked. I'll try and do that again. So this is a very simple demonstration of how you can use a simple application whitelisting policy. We didn't demonstrate the application blacklisting policy using system lockdown. Um, and there's a couple of things that I wanted to mention about using the CEPM to gather your checksum file hashes rather than using the traditional method, which is to go into your machine. Like we demonstrated earlier, Will demonstrated using command prompt and using checksum.exe. If we did run this, run command on computers and then collect file file fingerprint list um, that list in our policies tab under the file fingerprint list you'll notice that it has this little machine next to it and that means it was gathered from an actual machine and we can't change the pol we cannot change this list at all we can't modify it um, we can't modify any settings with it all we can do is uh, we can delete it and we can view the properties of it We can add a new file fingerprint list, but we cannot modify this list. So in the future, you know, if, if we decided that at some point in the future we found the, the executable ftp.exe to be undesirable, we didn't want that to execute anymore, um, we could just simply remove it from this file fingerprint list here by deleting this line as, with the hash and the file name, save the list, and then re-import it into the CEPM by deleting or editing this list here. We have several options we can append, we can replace, we can remove, um, or we can add several lists together. So I'm just gonna replace in this case. And this is one of the benefits of doing it the manual way. You can see the file size has changed a little bit. That's just indicating that uh, that we've removed a line. These are now no longer the same. There's something different about them. Um, but at this point, we have removed the ftp.exe. So if we go back to our policies, system lockdown still enabled. Let's flip back over to our client machine and update our policy again. Give it another 15 seconds or so just to make sure it's taken place. 
Another useful little tip here is if you're trying to make comparisons with the policy or you're trying to troubleshoot maybe why an application is not showing up quite yet, perhaps you just didn't give it enough time, which you can verify by using a serial number here. Um, usually can check the last three digits of the serial number and compare it to the serial number that appears in your client group. So we can see that they're both 916. That indicates that this policy is current on the management server and the client has received it and is applying it correctly at this point in time. So I remove the, the FTP application. I should not be allowed to run that any longer. It's being blocked by SEP. And this is one of the benefits of doing things the, the, the manual way, so to speak, using the checksum to generate your list of hashes, because as mentioned previously in this, uh, in this, this one here that was generated by using the management console, you cannot modify this list. And if you try and export it, um, thinking that you'll be able to modify it that way, you'll see that you only get a list of hashes. You don't have any file names. So it's not easy for you to visually see what you are removing or adding from your application file fingerprint list. So there's pros and cons to doing it both ways, right, Jake? And uh, even though uh, uh, customers may be and should be moving up to 12.1.6, they still have the option of doing it the, and I'm, I'm doing this in hanging quotes, the old-fashioned way of logging on to the endpoint and running that checksum executable. So it's not, a, it's not as if it's impossible to automate. Um, you still have some automation around the quote-unquote old-fashioned way of generating a checksum yourself using the checksum utility on the, cert, on the, the local client. Um, but you do have the capability to generate a file fingerprint list from a client using the management server remotely without having to have local access to that machine. Well, great. That's uh, really good stuff, and I think that's uh, we can wrap up the video right here. That's what we wanted to demonstrate and uh, uh, show everyone that um, downloaded and, and is viewing our video. If you have any questions, you can certainly email them to anyone here at ITS. Uh, but with that, I'll thank you for watching the video, and Jake, thanks very much for participating.